Houdini 21 is out and there's lots of new features and one of those is the new cables inside of COPS. So let's look at them and the different nodes that are associated with them. So I will make this project file available on Patreon. If you want to grab it on there, you can do so. But we're just going to take a look at the cables. They're a little bit interesting. Um, I'm going to drop down a couple of things to start off with. So we'll do an SCF setup, which is a node that I created, our recipe, I should say, that I created that just gives us some nodes here. So SCF shape and SCF to mono. I'm going to come in here and just change this to something else. Let's go. Sure, we'll go with this and I'm going to make a couple of these just to give us some different shapes here. So let's do the chevron and then for this one we can do the infinity. And if we want to take all of these and this is kind of like a, a organization thing for your scene the the cables are. So I can come in here and I can drop down a cable pack. And what this does is allows us to wire in a few different things in here or however many that we want. And it's going to pack them all together. Now you're not going to be able to switch between them and see which ones, you know, which on here. But we can take these and give them all their own unique names. Or we can click this set fields from input. And I'm going to not do that for now. I'm going to call this what they are. Um, so this was um, asterisk and then chevron aster asterisk. How do you spell that? Asterisk. Yeah. Chevron and then infinity. So Chevron infinity. And actually I'm going to leave this last one as mono for a specific reason. So we'll look at that here in a second. But if I start to type in this cable, you can see all the different nodes that we have available to us. So first of all, we have this cable rename. So if I wire in this cable, I can rename our different cables. So if we know what they're called in this case, we know that this one is called mono. So I can change this from mono to infinity. And now if I do a cable unpack, you can set fields from input and you can see that we now have this infinity for the name. If I just bypass this real quick, clear these and set that again, well, I guess it still does with the infinity. I don't think that is intended. If I do that now, it's going to... Um, rename it to that mono. So there's still some quirks with this as well. Um, so let's, I guess uh, <laughs> the cable rename works even if you bypass it. That's a little interesting. Um, but that's probably not intended. So uh, I would anticipate that change. But anyways, you can use this to rename your different cables so that they're output with whatever names that you'd like. We can also do things to the entirety of our cables. So if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to multiply or yeah, if I wanted to multiply these by something, so let's take this and let's do like a fractal noise. I can multiply our fractal noise against this and you can see that's going to apply that to our, in this case, the asterisks. And then you may be asking yourself, why is this useful? We can take these and we can wire them into different things like a scatter shapes node. And if I look at this now, this is going to use those on our inputs. And you can see that we are actually getting the fractal noise applied to all the different shapes here, not just that first one. So if I bypass this, you can see what we get without that. And then I can get that back with that. Now, we also have some outputs. So like with this, we have the outputs. If I take this, let's say I want to name this. Let's say I'll, I want to name this one like I wouldn't normally. That's Well, let's not do that, I guess. Let's do, let's wire it into a null here. 
And I'm going to call this one, well, we'll wire in all these up and then I will rename them. Let's wire these all back into a cable pack. And I could just call these like base color. I can call this um, metalness. And then the last one I could call like roughness. Now, obviously you would set these as like your actual um, channels, but just for demonstrations purposes, we can take this now and we can wire this into a preview material, but there's no input for this, for this cable. So this is the output for a cable but we don't have an input. What we can do is we could come to that node, we can click this little cogwheel, and we can come down and said add input override port. And that's going to add this input here, which by the way, we're calling these ears. Apparently that's what they were called at some point in time in development that has since gone away, I guess, but I like the name. So we're gonna, we're gonna stick with that. So call these things ears. So we can wire these in here, and then you can see that we have these inputs already overridden. As long as the names match here for your cables, it will wire them into the correct um, spots that they would, they would go. And that just keeps things a little bit more clean. So let's look at some of the other cable things. We have this cable filter, which to be honest with you, I know what it does, but I don't know why it would ever happen. So if I look at the Docs here, it says it takes an input cable and outputs that cable without any of its empty wires. I I don't know how you even trigger anything to have empty wires. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure it happens because otherwise this wouldn't exist. Uh, but just know that the, that's what that's for. Then we have cable merge. So if I wanted to, let's say take these, I can take these and I can wire them together. And then if I did a cable unpack here, cable unpack, set fields from input, it's going to copy these over because that's what I have set. If I set them to union, let's see if it does anything different with this one. It's going to add them to together based off of their names. So you see that this one, we had this one asterisk, chevron, and then mono. This one, we renamed that mono to infinity. So since they don't have the same name, it's not going to add those channels together. But since the other two were already named the same, it's going to you know, make those all one channel. If I change this to difference, it's going to only add in the ones that are not named the same. If I set it to copy, it's gonna copy over full union. It's going to union, like basically add them all into this. And then we have rename, which I believe renames them all. Um, if they match or something like that, let's look at the docs. I can't remember exactly what it said. So, whoops, that's the wrong note. So union, we saw that they are followed by every wire in the second cable that's not already in the first cable. So that's based off of the name. Intersection is going to output contains every wire that's in both cables. Um, the wires data comes from the first cable if it's present in both cables. So that's important to note as well. So it'll overwrite difference. We saw what that did. Copy copies the structure. Um, the output cable structure matches the second cable. So important that the second cable is going to overwrite what's in the first. And then if wires that don't exist in the first cable, um, all right, sorry, to form this cable, data is preferentially taken from the first cable. Wires that don't exist in the first cable carry data from the second cable. Um, and then full union, we saw that that just adds everything together. Rename, output, 
cable contains the first cable's data, but it's named according to the wires of the second cable. So if we look at that, the second cable. So it's renamed um, this infinity back to mono. So that's how that works. Um, we then have the cable sort. So those are all named. Well, I guess we could wire them in. Let's just wire this in. Well, let's take another one of these renames. And let's rename mono to, or actually not mono, let's rename chevron to, I don't know, um, like UV, I don't know, whatever. Something that's going to be later on uh, in, the, in the naming or in the alphabet. So if we look here, we have this cable sort, and then we can wire this into a cable unpack. And set fields from input, and you can see that that UV is at the bottom. So if I don't do this, let's clear this. And I set fields from input, you see that the UV is now in the second input instead of the last one there. So you can use that to sort out the inputs so that they're alphabetical, however you want. Um, or we can reverse that. There's a checkbox to reverse that as well. And then we have cable split, which allows us to, to split out by a number of different things. Let's just wire in this again. So we have patterns, we have name patterns, we have types, we can split out by types, and split out by range, and then we have like a random chance. So it's sort of similar to like the, the group um, nodes. Like that, these are similar, um, like type of interface to that. So you can mess around with that and get uh, some cables split out to only contain, you know, your cable to only contain what you want. And then I think the last one is this cable switch, which is just going to switch the input. So if I let's just Look at the docs here. This node takes in two cable outputs uh, or cables and outputs one of them according to a parameter value. So let's say I had, let's do these again and let's completely change these. So in here, we'll come to a check. Let's go to the compound, do the archway, sure. And then a horseshoe. And we could do a cable pack again. Wire these in, and then I can wire in our old one we had up here. It's kind of a mess. And then wire this into this one, and then we can use that scatter shapes again. Use that as an input for our shapes. And if I switch this now to our second input, you can see that we get that second input. So it's just like a, a normal switch node. And then we can output all of the cables. So if I output this cable, let's do a cable unpack here as well. And set fields from input. You can see once we pass this into a node and then we use this as our output, we now get the outputs for that node. So that's important to remember as well. There is also one other thing that is for organization that is new to 21, which is the fetch node. So let's say I wanted to, I wanted to take, I don't know, this, this SDF to mono up here, this asterisk, and I wanted to use it down here and add it to this cable pack. I can paste that cop path in here and now we get that. And then I can just wire that into our cable pack here. If I set the outputs correctly, we can use that down here instead.
Let's add that to it instead of replacing. Oops. There we go. So this fetch node is pretty cool too. It's like an object merge that we would have in SOPS, uh, but it's kind of work ops here. So pretty cool stuff there. So that's how the cable tools work inside of 21. Pretty useful for applying things across, you know, a bunch of different layers all at once if you want, as well as just for organization in general. Specifically, I really like that we can take the cables and input them into a node and have them automatically, you know, apply to this. So let's, we could also say that, you know, if we didn't have, um, let's do, let's just unwire this for now and let's unwire this. This is a something that happens with this as well. It, it doesn't automatically remove your channels here. So I think if we copy and paste this, no, nope, it still has that. Let's just drop that back down. Cable pack. And let's wire these two in here. And we have, let's drop another one down. Cable pack. And wire this in, and then let's just do like a constant here. And we'll call this one something else. So let's take this and let's put our base color back. Base color, metalness. And then for this one, let's call this, um, what did I say, roughness? Roughness before, and then I can do like opacity for this one. Opacity. We can cable merge these. Let's do a full union and then I can wire these into that input here and you can see that they're going to wire in here as well. So we can start to build things out and then we can wire everything into the node um, for um, there everything into like this cable merge or into a single cable or a cable pack and then we can wire that into a preview material and everything will automatically you know, wire in appropriately. And it's just a little bit cleaner than having a whole bunch of wires running everywhere. Um, just, you know, a little bit nicer as well. So that is how the cables work inside of 21. Mess around with them. They're pretty cool. I, I haven't, I'm sure that there's other things that they're going to be, you know, useful for other than just like applying things across, you know, a bunch of different channels and organization stuff. Um, I'm sure that we're going to find a bunch of, you know, undiscovered uses for them not just for like shadow, uh, the, the shape scatter there. But anyways, hopefully this helps you out. I've got a bunch of other videos on Houdini 21 that are coming out and that are uh, going to continue to come out. So if you want to not miss anything new in the updates, then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.